You're listening to Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM. Today's episode, Sanctuary. A couple days ago, I read an article from the United Press about a survey in which 35% of British adults were said to sleep with a teddy bear. A quarter of the male respondents reported taking their teddy bear with them when going away on business. Many said the bear reminded them of home. 15% of men also said they treat their teddy like a best friend, sharing with it their most intimate secrets. After reading the article, I put a call out on Craigslist for an Englishman living in Canada who sleeps with a teddy bear, hoping to hear firsthand what the deal was. Hey, hey, Martin. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. And so I find myself meeting Martin, not his real name. He wanted to remain anonymous, who tells me he not only sleeps with a teddy bear, but owns a whole collection of them, about three dozen, all with their own names. He says he's been collecting them since he's a kid and keeps them on display by his bedside. I can't wait to meet them. Oh, wow. So this is, uh, this is my bedroom? This is, uh, this is a lot of teddy bears. 35 teddy bears in here, yeah. The air listers, as it were. Give me a quick introduction to each of the bears, if you could, or, or, or give me their names. Across the top shelf here we have uh, San Diego, Annabelle. Florence, Chimichunga, Francis, Terence, Bottle Cap, Precious, Chuggalugs, Muggins, James, James the Second, James the Third, Marie, Pedigree, Margaret Thatcher's Bear, Podger, and Cheery Happy Smiles. Okay. And the one that's in the bed here, what is its name? That's Tough Love. A little rough around the edges, as you can see, but a lot of spirit in that bear. He's got, he's got a little tattoo, and he's wearing sort of like a cut-off jean vest. Kind of a Hell's Angel bear, I think it's meant to be. Is he the, uh, the bear that always stays in bed, or do you mix it up a little? There are no favourites here. E- every night, it's a different bear. Very much about companionship, having someone to talk to, I suppose. But that doesn't talk back. They still speak. I mean, they don't speak, but they speak... You're touching your heart right now. I mean, that's where the words arrive in me. Not in my ears, in my heart. Perhaps if we take a moment now and just listen, just look at the bears into their eyes or or not, is something happening? Do you hear that? I don't. Is is the bear saying something to you right now? Oh, you've not been out today, have you? We should get out more. Go meet girls. So, ab- about girls, um, how do they respond when they when they come over and encounter your your collection for the first time? The last girl, I don't think I could describe it as delight. The experience that she had when she entered my bedroom, I think it was closer to horror, fear, perhaps. Um, it's almost a place of too much love, I think, for some people, and some people find that very um, difficult to, to deal with, to react to. Can I ask you, though, what, what do you feel like these teddy bears are able to give you that, that, that you're not able to get from human beings? Well, let me reverse the question. What can I get from human beings that I couldn't get from a teddy bear? You, you know, reciprocity. Um, you can't go out for a cup of coffee. With with one of your teddy bears, right? We have tea parties. That's a big part of our lives. I think you can understand what I mean by that. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I, I guess I'm having trouble wrapping my head around it. I think that the um, the Canadian perception of the bear is perhaps a little different to the British perception. I mean, you treat them as kind of a light, a toy almost. I would say in some ways. The teddy bear. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't that that is what it is? I mean, it's it's designed for kids, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, some people certainly would have that opinion, but in certain cultures, I would say that teddies would be worshipped. So what is the teddy bear that asks nothing and yet receives love? Maybe you can explain to me a bit about how uh, your collection began. My parents were very cold people, very distant, and I spent a lot of time um, being raised by my grandmother, who 
also did not have a lot of love in her heart, I would I think it would be fair to say. Um and I spent a lot of time on my own in her home with her possessions and she was a, a great collector of trinkets and things. Um and one of the things that she used to collect of course was bears. Um there was one evening when uh, my grandmother went out to the pub as she so often did and she left me alone weeping and there was the bears and and I, it's hard to explain but I didn't feel alone I, I wasn't alone in that room I really actually wasn't alone in that room and people forget that a teddy bear is a bear it's one of nature's fiercest biggest creatures and and I mean, it's it's a scary world that we live in now, and I will be the first to admit that sometimes I lie in bed terrified. But then I think about these bears, and they are bears filling my room, and the protection that they provide me with. There really isn't anything else to come close to that. I have protection. This room, look around this room. This is true protection. The comfort and protection of home is hard to replicate in the real world. Sometimes, just being out and about makes us feel like we're running the risk of being exposed. A couple nights ago, I was coming home late after work. There were only a few people on the metro car, and after a couple stops, everyone trickled out, until I was left all alone. I live in a busy city, teeming with people, but at least until the next metro stop, I had the place entirely to myself. How should I celebrate this uncommon occurrence, I wondered? Without any eyes upon me, how do I just fearlessly be myself? Swing around the handrail like I'm in a 1940s musical? Scream? Get naked? Swing around the handrail while screaming and naked? Of course I did nothing. But such unexpected respites from the bustle of modern city life can almost feel like a state of grace. Sometimes life just drops these moments in our lap. Other times we have to seek them out for ourselves, doing anything we can to lock out the world. So I say to him, look, you know, I ordered all dressed, okay? All dressed means with ketchup. That's all dressed up partially dressed, not 75% dressed. Yes, I appreciate you give me mustard and coleslaw and onions and all the other mishigats you put on there, but put some ketchup on there. Wait, what, what, what is that uh, uh, jingling and jangling in the background? When I get impassioned, I tend to jiggle about. And, and what are you jiggling about? What is that? It's my key ring. When I get worked up, I, I kind of fondle my keys like rosary beads. You hear like this. How many keys do you have? I don't know, a couple hundred. A couple hundred keys. Well, what are you, like a janitor now? First of all, the word is custodian. It shows some respect, son. Second of all, no, I just have a large key ring with many, many hundreds of keys on it that I carry around all day long. Okay, may I just say, as far as I know, you would have two keys. One to your front door, and then one to that storage unit where you keep all your, your toys. Action figures are worth a lot of money, and quite frankly, I have a lot emotionally invested in them, and I won't have them mocked. You've never been supportive of my you're, figurine collection, and you know what? I really don't appreciate you're, it. You're jingling again. Well, you've jangled my nerves, so no wonder I'm jingling. Well, what? Why all the keys? John, have you ever been out and about downtown, you know, and uh, the world is pressing in on you, and it's very hectic, and there are people milling about everywhere, and you just need a little private time. What does this have to do with the keys? So for the last 12 months, I've been stealing restroom keys from around the city to every cafe, restaurant, hotel that I can find, and I keep them, so that they're always available to me. You steal restroom keys. Look, John, have you ever been in a cafe and you need to use the bathroom, the washroom, the restroom, the room room? Right. The boom boom room? Yeah, you got to use it, right? So you got to ask for the key. There. You have to ask permission. Excuse me, can I use the bathroom? Right? I mean, it's humiliating. I mean, they don't just give you a key. Mm -hmm. They give you a key attached to this, I don't even know, what do you call it, a dongle? And, and what are you supposed to do with that? It doesn't fit in your pocket. Well, that's it's the like point. It's like a giant blaring neon sign saying, I am going to the bathroom. Look at me. Josh, no one's looking at Sometimes you. Sometimes the dongle is actually a spatula. I don't want to be sitting on a toilet holding a spatula again. So my solution, 
is to bring my tin shears, and I just chop that baby off, and uh, I just take the key. And then I slide it onto my key ring. So you've been spending the past few months going from public restroom to public restroom, acquiring all these keys. You make it sound so weird. It, it, it's pretty strange. It's not. It's proactive. Me and you, right? Uh-huh. We're out on the town. We're out there. We're having a great time. And then we go to a cafe. And then all of a sudden, you know, boom, like Jack London said, right? Call of nature. I believe that was the call of the wild. Yeah, same diff. Look, the, the point is, you got to go. And you, Jonathan Goldstein, is going to have to get up, go over to some 18-year-old, right, who looks at you with a mixture of pity and contempt and hands you the spatula, right? And everybody knows. It's like, it's like the scarlet letter. But for me... I don't ask permission. I do what I want. I stride up to the bathroom, bingo, bango, free access. You know, Bob's your uncle. You, you, you're quite the free spirit. That's the sound of freedom. That's the sound of privacy. Uh huh. So let me look through here uh, to give you the highlights. This key right here, this is the passport to Marble and Low Light. Yeah, that's a hotel bathroom. That's the Holy Grail. You'll get this from me when you pry it from my cold, dead fingers. I'm not going to be trying to do that. Then uh, this key right here, that's a McDonald's bathroom. Uh-huh. And let me tell you something. You, you never want to use the bathroom after Grimace gets through with it. But other than that, it's pretty spacious. Oh, uh, okay, what else? This key right here, this is for the family bathroom at Ikea. they got a diaper-changing station I like to lounge on. <laughs> no, you don't. So, a diaper-changing station, John, is the modern-day fainting couch. This is the key to the, uh, the executive bathroom at the CBC. That's, uh, that's a pearl. How did you get your hands on that? Well, remember when you invited me to that function? The anniversary of your show or what, something? What, you, you stole a key that evening? Yeah, you know, the, the head of the CBC was there. I lifted it from his pocket. I, I've never even been in that bathroom. Really? Can I just say something? I guess. What about the poor citizenship that this speaks of? What do you the, mean? The fact that you've been depriving all these other people How am I of depriving bath- them of anything? Because you've taken away the key. Look, don't worry about the other citizens, okay? Believe me, they're not worrying about you. You know, It's not even just about the bathroom qua bathroom. Sometimes it's just about finding an oasis, right? An urban oasis in a people desert. You know, I, everybody's I, pressing in on you, you know, more, more. Everyone wants a piece of me, right? But I just want some peace. And what, what do you do during these, uh, d- during these little respites? What don't I do? I clip my nails. I have a good read. Sometimes I get a, like to get a nice thick milkshake. I don't want to drink that where people can see me, right? I want to drink that in private because everyone's always staring at me. So I retreat into my private sanctum. Ugh, forum, to have you know? a milkshake. Sometimes I like to have a nice peanut butter sandwich with no crust. Uh-huh. Sometimes I like to play uh, a nice game of solitaire. And you know what? Sometimes I just like to call up a dear old friend. What is that supposed to mean? Some make themselves at home, no matter where they go, while others don't feel at home even when they are at home. But for such people, a sanctuary can pop up in the most unexpected of places. Do you know about World... It's called World of Warcraft. Or do, do you know about this game? Uh, not much. I mean, it's it's like a role-playing video game, right? Yeah, and and my and my son Jake is, is totally addicted to it. He spends, you know, 10 minutes on his homework and then hours and hours on the game. And how old is he now? He's 14. And it has been the source of so much tension in our home. You know, I actually bought him a stopwatch and I told him that he had to use it whenever he goes on the game and that he can only be on for 30 minutes and he had to do his homework and blah, blah, blah. But I would, you know, say goodnight to him and I would see the glow of the computer light under his door and it was really, really freaking me out. So about a week ago, the kids were at school, and I've been working from home these days, which is another story. But um, I was taking a break, and of course I mean I was doing chores and just checking things off my list. And I had a bunch of folded laundry, and I was taking it into Jake's room, and I noticed that um, he was still logged on to the game. And... You know, I was just curious. I just wanted to see what it was and what he was really doing. So I sat down at the computer and I started moving the mouse around and, you know, pushing buttons. And 
I started poking around in the in the world, and it was not at all what I expected it to be. Why? What What was it like? It was actually kind of beautiful. You know, it's like a fantasy world that's all purple and green and sparkly, and you almost expect you know a unicorn to come jumping out at any moment. And it was so quiet in there. Huh? Because you know, with it, with a name like World of Warcraft, you'd think there'd be lots of fighting and violence. That's and- yeah. That's what I thought too. And and it was so quiet. It was like. It was like floating in a pond of of green jello. It was just, it was serene. I was this little elf character, and I was walking around, and then I I just sort of got caught up in it, and I come upon this little house, and um, mm-hmm. it looks kind of like a fairy house, and there's smoke coming out of the chimney, and I open the door, and. Well, first I bumped into the door because I didn't know what I was doing and I was just pushing the buttons. But then I got into the house I somehow and there was like a little fire in the fireplace. And then I sat down and I sat there. I sat there for an hour. You, you d- Doing what? Nothing. I was sitting there as an elf and it was lovely. Wasn't there some kind of mission that you were supposed to be on? I mean, I mean, in these games, you're not supposed to just sit around. You know, they're, they're, you're, you're supposed to be killing somebody. There's some kind of goal or something. I mean, I understand. Yes, the, uh, it's a game that has goals, but that's what life is. It's all about goals. It's about getting things done and checking things off the list. And the thing that I liked about this whole thing was that there was nothing to do. It was just quiet. So basically, this went on for a couple of days where I just couldn't stop thinking about the game and all I wanted to do was just get right back to it and become this elf who has no stress and no nobody, you know, asking for things like make dinner and earn money and drive me here. It was so nice. And so it's been about a week now, and every day when my life feels like it's getting a bit much, I log into that world and I just sit there in that hut. I just hope Jake doesn't find out about it, because he'd think I was such a hypocrite. Perhaps a sanctuary isn't a specific physical place we go to to find solace, but rather a feeling of peace that we carry within us, or carry outside of us. <laughs> yeah, guess what I'm calling you from? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> your house? I'm at my place. Okay. So you're at home. No, I'm not at home, but I'm at my place. <laughs> you haven't been institutionalized, have you? I'm at home, but I'm not. I'm at my place. Howard, I don't know outside. what you're talking about. What? You're outside. I'm in my MHU. Excuse me. My MHU. An MHU. What is that? OMG. You know what an MHU is? Mobile housing unit. What is a mobile housing unit? You know how people, they have RVs and they have Winnebago's and that kind of stuff? They have a home away from home? Right. So the concept of an MHU is basically it's a portable home. It's a portable house. Would you steal someone's RV and start driving it around as a house or something? I'm carrying a house. What? I have this house that's attached to me. What are you talking I've taken from nature. Look at the tortoise. Look at the armadillo. Their home is around them. A snail. Look at a hermit crab. So, so you're a human tortoise now. No, I'm a human being in a mobile housing unit. Where I go, the house goes. Wait a second. I've got straps. This is You're all... carrying around a house. I have a reconstructed, reinforced, insulated home what? where cardboard is a factor 
I have plumbing that I'm working on and electricity. Let me get this straight. So you're walking around with a cardboard box over your head. I'm walking around with three reconstructed, empty refrigerator boxes. This thing is huge. I've got about maybe 25 square feet on this thing. Excuse me. Wide load coming through. And where are you? Walking down St. Catherine Street, just having a stroll in my home, sipping some tea. You, you, uh, you. Good afternoon, madam. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. You're taking up the whole sidewalk. I have, I have the house wrapped around my head, literally. How do people get around you? They get around. How, how, how do people it? get around a kiosk or a, or a magazine stand? Well, look, a magazine stand isn't, isn't moving down the sidewalk. Well, I, I, I mean, that's his problem. He's behind the times. I mean, man, here's the first time in my life I really feel like I have a home, like I really belong. <laughs> you! <laughs> you! Yeah, keep walking! Neighbors, huh? I basically move my home to any outlet that's around, in a shopping center or an airport. For heating, it's a little bit chilly outside. I stand over a sewer grating. And that's how I solve my plumbing problem, by the way. By standing over a sewer grating. Like, you make fun of me, but when you're at home, I mean, are you, getting, are you getting any sunlight? Are you getting fresh air? Are you getting exercise? I do. Do you? I, no, I guess I don't. No. You're getting a good look? You want to take a photo, it'll last longer. Take a picture. What, what, what do you got there? People looking in the window trying to see what's going on in here. Gotta get some curtains for this place. Well, what, what, was that, what was that noise? Oh, uh, something just fell off the shelf. I'm having a problem with the shelving. You, you have shelves? I've got art on the walls. I have a cat in here somewhere. I can't seem to find it. Every time I turn around... We well, yeah, that one. That wasn't so good that time. What, what, what just fell? Uh, that was a teacup. You might have recognized the sound of it shattering. It belongs to you... And I think I've broken a couple when I've come over before. From my hutch? Yeah. Howard, those are my great-great-grandmother's tea set. Uh, do you have chocolate? What, what are you doing right now? I was getting an ice cream. Yeah, I'll take the chocolate and just slip it through the mail slot. You know the pleasure of having things like delivered to your home kind of thing? Uh-huh. This is like the other way around. Like my home goes to the restaurant, so I get takeout everywhere I go. Because I'm in my house wherever I go. That must be very exciting. It's very satisfying. It's like the whole world delivers. Howard, I'm really concerned about your mental health. I am in a, in a place right now where I'm warm and I'm sheltered. I can move wherever I want. You're going to tell me this is not the way of the future? Revolutionizing how people live? There wouldn't be rich neighborhoods or poor neighborhoods anymore. It would be one neighborhood. You don't have to shovel a walk anymore. You don't have to shovel a walk. You're walking on the walk. Uh-huh. Okay, like another benefit. You know, sometimes, like, you know, I'd like for you to come over or like to get together. You always see you don't have time. You have time to come visit and you're very busy and there's things you're doing and you can't come over. Mm-hmm. Now my place can come to you. I come on into your place, and then you come on into my place. And we hang out at my place. In my place. And then we can, you can stay in my place, and we leave your place, and we go someplace else, but you're still in my place. With all the amenities of home. We'll play a video game, we drink a tea. Oh, the washroom's just in the back to the left, over that grating. So let, let me get this. So you come over, and we'd sit in my living room in a, in a cardboard box. I, I don't like that derogatory tone. Well. We'd be in a cardboard home. And for the record, mm-hmm. this cardboard is completely coated in packing tape. Where, so where did you get these boxes, by the by? You know, refrigerators come in uh, refrigerator boxes. Right. And I need the boxes. Right. And I figured you can use the refrigerators. Wait a second. You... Hang on a second. You, you, you didn't have a refrigerator delivered to my house. No. I had three refrigerators delivered to your house. I, Are you I, kidding me? I need the boxes, and you kind of need the refrigerator. What do you You're... mean I kind of need refrigerator? I don't need any refrigerator. Well, your old one got thrown out. You threw out my old refrigerator. And aren't you kosher? Now you got a meat one, a milk one, and one down in the basement for the extra stuff. What extra stuff? Like when you're having a dinner party. And actually, I'm planning to have a dinner party at my mobile housing unit next week, so I thought maybe I could use your basement fridge. On Wiretap today, you heard Martin Ferrer, Joshua Carpati, Wendy Dore, and Howard Chakowitz. Special thanks to Emily Condon. Wiretap is produced by Mirabert Wintonic, Crystal Duhame, and me, Jonathan Goldstein. Tune into Wiretap Saturdays at 3.30 and Thursday evenings at 11.30. You can also hear Wiretap across North America on Sirius XM. Or subscribe to the free podcast at cbc.ca slash wiretap where you can also download the latest wiretap ringtone. Florence, Chimichunga, Bottle Cap, Precious, Chuggalugs, Muggins, Podger. List the members of your motorcycle gang. And cheery happy smiles. With every ring of your phone. 